Quick Link Productions. Quick Link Productions. Hello, my name is Miguel Labadi, welcoming you to Sports Arts Entertainment, a brand new interesting show brought to you by Quick Link Productions and Dominica News Online. We are at the Champagne Reef today. The atmosphere is quite nice. The breeze just hitting me gently. Some folks are just coming from a scuba diving tour. I just saw some folks also snorkeling at the Champagne Reef. I'm just awaiting my glass of fruit punch. So get comfortable and relax as we're about to entertain you. Our first segment of Sports Arts Entertainment is brought to you by Champagne Reef Dive and Snorkel. We're here with the beautiful Lucy Johnson of Champagne Reef Dive and Snorkel. Lucy, what is the experience like at Champagne Reef? Well, you know, the easiest thing to do would be to ask one of our clients going through. But as I'm the one answering the question, diving and snorkeling at Champagne Reef is one of the best experiences anyone coming to the island can ever have. Wow. Would uh, snorkeling or going out to do some scuba diving require any level of uh, training, some sort of certification, or could we just go out there and have a good time? For snorkeling, snorkeling is a very easy sport. Anyone um, who is confident within themselves can just go out there and experience snorkeling at Champagne Reef. Um, we have guides who make it a lot easier for those who are not so confident and those who want to experience mm, a lot more than just going out on their own. We can take them out on the reef and give them a real good tour. For the diving element of it, we do offer um, the diving courses from the Discover Scuba up all the way up um, to the dive master level. Um, anyone coming through here who is certified, yes, you are welcome to come and dive with us. Both our local clients, our stayover and our cruise ship clients. Well, here you have it. We'll have more from Lucy in a minute. But first, let's check out this featured video on our first episode of Sports Arts Entertainment. My name is Simon Walsh. I am president of the Dominica Water Sports Association and one of the primary organizers of Dive Fest. So this morning I left Rozo early in order to head up to the Carib territory to meet with Mr. Sanford, one of the premier boat builders in Dominica, and actually come up here for the um, Dive Fest, the Kabuli Canoe Race, and purchase this boat on behalf of the Dominica Water Sports Association. And this is actually going to be the Digicel, who are our headline sponsor for Dive Fest. This is going to be the boat that uh, is painted up to represent Digicel um, during the races. Sanford! Hey, how are you? Good to see you. All right, all right, all right. So, we're all set? Boat's ready? Uh, we have one ready there. Okay, all right, yeah. excellent. Should we go check it out? Yep. Okay, so that's the boat. Yeah, that's the boat. How long is that? 16. 16 feet? Yep. Oh, nice, perfect. As you said, because the boats we're looking for are like 15, 16 feet long. The reason we put this race on 20 years ago was really, um, we thought it would be a completely unique event. It would be a fun event and also it would support the, the Carib culture of building these canoes. So it would be something where we are, um, although the event is not happening in the Carib culture, we, we, we felt good if Dive Fest could support the Kalanago people by making sure that we supported the continuation of this craft in the, uh, in the culture up here in the, in the Kalanago territory. So 20 years ago we had that idea and today is sort of a a culmination of that by when you see that we're actually coming up here where we paid Mr. Sanford to build this boat and had a conversation with him for hopefully building five more boats for this, uh, the, the Kabuli Canoe Race next year um, in Dive Fest. And you have, you have oars for that? Yeah, the oars are at all. Okay, all right, great. 
So hopefully I'll be calling you and uh, telling you yes by July of next year we'll need five more. Yeah. That'd be nice. That would be nice. Because what is going to happen is we're going to put this into the the community if the sponsors agree. These boats are going to go to the fishermen in Sufria and they can use the boat on a regular basis. So to me it's not only supporting the Carib community, but it's also supporting the fishing community down in Sufria because fellas that don't have a boat, now they would have a boat to be using, you know? And then when, it, when you come around Dive Fest, all the boats will come on shore and get repainted up and cleaned up for the event and when, then we have the races. I'm even hoping next year we might have two days where we use the boats. Well, the process of building a boat, um, first thing you have to do is to think of when, when you're going to build it. So when you, when you make your mind when you're going to build it, you go, you, you, you go and search for your tree. When you search for the tree, you know where your tree is, and then you think, well, it's a good tree. When you come back to it, you fall it down. After you fall it down, you lock it out. You dress it to get the stomach. And after that, you draw your, make your drawings. And then you start to dig it either with axe or chainsaw, whatever tool you have. And then you continue with ads. You have to have two ads, a small and a big. Now hatch it, and then you start to dig it. Okay, so how long does it take you to go from the actual cutting of the tree to, to having a finished product? We say it takes um, three months. Uh, it could be a little more, but three months. Because we take out time for weather, and time for you yourself, because not every day you go to the bush, you, as a you have a family, you have to go to the garden, you have to make your work. Sometimes you go fishing, you know, I mean, you know, we, we space these times. That especially that we say in three months' time, we can give you a finished boat. Okay, so um, do you find a lot of young people taking on the tradition of boat building? Um, for now, I, I not, I don't think they are, they are, they are, they keen in that because of, I don't know, is a is a system which comes in the Carib territory you now, like young guys they just by the road, taking taking taking. We say drugs. Like that is a hobby for them now, just going by the road and whatever. But I train fellas already. I make two schooling, two classes a couple of years back, teaching the teaching them. But with all that, it's not to say that is a, a lesson you learn as a book and then you learn it and then you can just say, okay, tomorrow I'll do it. It is much more difficult than that. Because you have to have guts when you go to the forest. To log a tree down and seeing the state of the tree and then for it to come like this where you're sitting down now and if you uh, you yourself will see the the the, the way that we build it most probably you'll see you never build one that is why they themselves as well they would like to do it but is the courage and the and the and the and the, uh, and the competent of what you want to do you follow like if you make decide that yes, I want to build it, I want to master that boat, I want to make sure that I hold the culture. That is the ability you have to have. But if you have got these abilities in you, you will never build it in. You know? Because you're thinking, well, you can plant some ban some bananas, you can plant some mayok, you can plant you can make otherwise, you know what I mean? But what I'm telling you now is that the most um, the most important thing that a human being needs is vitamin. And if you don't eat fish, you eat a sick man. You're like me now. I eat fish for all my life, you know. And now I'm six, now I'm 66. And if I tell if I don't tell somebody I'm 66, they'll say it's like they'll say I'm around for probably 50 or 50 something. So so we'll see you next year. We we hopefully we can have five or six of these and all well set up. But that, that boat's looking good. So we have to get this transported down to Sufria. Well, hopefully after 20 years of doing Dive Fest, no one's skeptical about coming to Dive Fest anymore. I mean, this is one of the big events on the calendar. Uh, year. Um, it is, there's something for everybody and, and when we first started people thought oh it's, it was all about diving or snow, only water-based sports but it isn't. This, the, the, the Kabuli canoe race is about coming down and bringing a corporate team so what you'll see is you'll see you know banks coming down everybody's in their bank shirts a little bit of company pride corporate pride and they come down they hang out in Sufria some people are rowing but a lot of the other people from the bank would be there just supporting them coming down and, and cheering them on and it's just a, a great um, environment to support your sort of corporate morale and get everybody coming down there and I, every year you see more and more shirts so you see 
everybody printing up DieFest shirts with a company logo on the back and coming up with team names. Um, so this event, I don't think we really anymore have to worry about exposing the event. Everybody knows about the Kabuli Canoe Race. Yeah, Sam, for that looking really nice, sir. Huh? Yeah. yeah, thanks a lot, sir. Huh? And I, I hope next year we'll have five more like that. Yeah. And we'll be in partnership. And like you said, we'll have a Carib team come down and I, I, I'll try to do that. And show yeah. show everybody how the how the professionals yeah. do it. I like a boat builder. I will I will tell all the boat builders, or all the community people, or whoever come to talk to me. I'll tell them that is my living. I teach my I teach my children. I send them to school. I send them to college with that material, which you call the gummy. And if no. Probably you're getting somewhere that say, some people are saying, well, you're finishing the Gombe in the forest and you must not go and build boats. I feel, well, you're squeezing, you're squeezing the, 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 the little part of the people. Like probably you have 10 or 15 builders now. You follow what I say? And then if you stop them from building their boats to make their living, you're going to make something happen. Poverty will, poverty will come. Because you must realize that we have self-sufficient people. We live by what we do. And it's traditional way we're living. You, we go fishing, we come back with gardening, we go to build our boats when we need our money. Somebody else calls us, tell us, hey, pal, I want you to build a boat for me. I say, okay, I build one. The other partner gets one, he builds a boat for him. But probably you put only two boats for the year, or you put one boat for the year. It's not to say something that you, you just go in and cut wood and, you know what I mean? But if you want to tell somebody that not to cut the trees in the forest for home materials too much, I accept that. But if, with the boat, there's a man life, there's a man life. If you just cut that from there's a man life, you, you, that, you know what I mean? The poverty will come somewhere. You, you are, for instance, like me, I make all different ways. I driving, I gardening, I fishing, I building boats. You, you know what I mean? And still for all, if, if I don't build a boat, I feel as if I am not satisfied because that is my traditional way of living. And we just cannot stop that. There's something for everybody at DiveFest. So people should just come out and support DiveFest. And by supporting the Dominica Water Sports Association and DiveFest, you are supporting the marketing and promotion of Dominica internationally because the funds that are raised for DiveFest all go into, into marketing Dominica around the world. All right, thanks Sanford. Yeah. All right. Welcome back to Sports, Arts, Entertainment and what an interesting piece that was on the Art of Boat Building tying in nicely with the 20th anniversary of Die Fest. Speaking of Die Fest, Lucy, uh, you guys hold a signature event of Die Fest every year. Tell us about that. Every year, um, Champion Reef Dive and Snorkel, we host the Kids Snorkel Treasure Hunt and it's an event that is free to the general public. All children between the ages of 8 to 15 are welcome down. Um, again, it's free and I really want to emphasize that it's free. So I'm too old to participate? You can come and support. Okay. okay. Parents, we ask you to come down with your kids. Um, children, whose parents are not accompanying them, please ensure that you ask your parents' permission to come. At the end of the hunt, at the end of the treasure hunt, we have some great prizes or signature prizes, for example, would be a champion reef dive and snorkel, open water certification for two children. The other kids, they win great prizes, such as um, family snorkel trips. We we'll try to encourage your family to bond during this time and to go out snorkeling with a guide, of course. And also, we have great prizes from, from our sponsors, some we've had for quite a number of years running. Um, the NCCU, DMC, which is Dominican Marine Center. We also have Dominic on board. We have 40, and don't um, forget the Human Society of Dominica, who have been very good to us and have been sponsoring us throughout the entire event. And of course, there are more sponsors, names which of course I'm forgetting, so please forgive me on that. <laughs> That's not a problem at all. Uh, all in all, big things happening at Champagne Reef, so be sure to come on down and check it out. This segment of Sports Art Entertainment brought to you by VF Inc. VF Inc. announces its sixth summer youth series, July 29th to August 3rd, 2013, at the Goodwill Parish Hall, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. See you there! 
Quick Link Productions. Quick Link Productions. Yeah, man, you don't know it's all about the boy DJ Flip, the boss, number one DJ. And it's all about Booyo to the World Summer Tour. We kick it off last weekend and we're rolling on. This is the first album, this is the second one. We got some more coming and we got others that's out already and we try and promote the vibes as well as trying and promote local artists in the areas we go to. Some are going to be real hot, real mad, real crazy. We got Kubuli, one of our sponsors. Yeah, man. We got Quick Links Production, we got Dominica News Online. Stay tuned for Quick Links updates. Yeah, man. Hey, Smokey Cuts. I you don't know it's your boy. I've been gone for a minute, but I'm back. Some new tunes, new vids, mixtape coming out soon. The name of the mixtape is Above Expectations. I know the fans are going to love this one. YouTube, MySpace, Facebook, Reverb Nation, Daily Motion. Big up yourself, you see me? Big up DNO, big up FGP, big up Quickling Productions. Right now, me a boss a summer tune for you. I'll give you a verse and chorus, you see me? As the night disappears, the sun starts rise up. Thank Father God as him open me eyes up. The breeze is blowing, hear the birds them sing. What a beautiful day him bring, yeah. From Sunday to Sunday is a non-stop break. Me shoes well clean and me beard done shape. Link up, I need to get a bad man braid. Cause you know it's summer again. If you ask how me feel, well it feels like summer. Me have to refill me cup and smoke some. Rolling a CRV cause we don't have Oma. Link up me chargey, check up for shorty. Hey, you know Smokey Cut. Always keeping it real with the fans. Promise to bring you nothing but fire. DNO, you large. You see me? Facebook fans. Friends all around the world, UK, USA, Ireland, New Zealand, big up yourself to you, see me? Big up the Goodwill crew, you know, quick links, productions, updates. Hey, I'm out. Thank you very much once again. Get a chance to win some hot live text promo t shirts. is who nicknamed, who christened the New Tom Savannah, the mecca of football in Dominica.
And I'm proud to say tonight that I did it for Kurt and I wish he was there to really see the effort that we did tonight there to give him that trophy that we worked so hard for. A 2-1 victory. Tell us how difficult was it out there in the middle? Yes, in the middle it was very difficult because the formation they had, they had five players in the centre and we only had three in the centre. So they always had two roaming in the space. So that's why we had to try our best in that middle there to conquer them. So how did you make the difference? How did you get around it? Well, we make the difference by I dropping back in the middle and with one striker and with Kelsen on the wing. So they were compact with one and one marking. Veterans has been trying for some time now to win this title. How much does this mean tonight? That means a lot, a lot, a lot. I can tell you honestly, we have, we have tried a long way back and we have never made it to the finals. And tonight, we, have, we did it and I'm proud to say thanks. And of course, we saw quite a few players being recruited for this season. I guess that may have worked in your favor. Yes, yes, very well, very well. With the experience, we have to do it and we did it. Thank you very much. Congratulations once again. Thank you very much, Brian Francis. Hubert Prince, how disappointing is this rain which has come to an end tonight? Very disappointed. Well, we disappoint our fans, ourselves, seeing we wanted the double. We wanted to do it twice. What went wrong? What went wrong? Well, the defense, we lack. When I step out, nobody didn't cover me. That, that's what caused the two goals. But they have commended you guys for the, for the formation that you, that you guys played. It made it quite difficult for them. Well, we, we try a formation to suit the players we have. So that was the best idea we could come up with. With the three at the back, seeing we have, have a whole lot of midfielders, so we could give everybody a fair chance to play. So that's why we come up with that formation, the 3-5-2. Five, five, you are very disappointed, but your whole take of tonight's game, how good a game was it? Well, it was tough, it was tough because veterans, as, uh, as you say, they have a, lo a whole lot of experience and they come out with it. True, we had the legs, but we are lacking the experience this time. I guess you guys are going to regroup for next year? Well, hopefully we, we will, we will. All right, uh, well, hard luck, best of luck next time. Yeah, thank you. And we have the coach of the ACS Purple City team, Bernard Gordon. Bernard Gordon, you must have fought at some point. You had this one in the bag and it slipped away. Tell me what's the feeling like. Well, I must say my team put up a strong fight. And the only problem I have with the game is the decision of, of the linesman. We had a clear goal and they took it away from us. The referee already decided it was a goal and the linesman took it away from us. But this comes with the game, it comes with the rules, but your, your, your whole you know, view of tonight's game, how challenging it was for your team as it relates to how the opponents played? Well, it was a very challenging game. I must say we had to come back from one down in the first half. And we come back, we were working hard and then the unfortunate to the linesman. Don Leogal, you, you started it, you ended it here tonight. The curtains are coming down on the, on the season. A huge crowd tonight. Tell us how satisfied are you on, uh, just describe how things went for you. Well, um, I think um, the game tonight, you know, ended the season on a very high note. Um, I was very satisfied with the standard of play that, that we saw tonight. I think both, both teams gave it their best. Um, on, in terms of the Highland Swap Swap, we are very satisfied that the season, the league has come to an end and it was a very successful one. Um, it shows that the interest of, of football in Newton, you know, from the last couple of years has really, has really come back and we have a lot to, uh, to thank the teams for that. You know, they really sh showed commitment and, and a high standard um, this year. Also, to, um, we'd like to thank our sponsors, that is Lime, and all the other sponsors, Domlek, National Cooperative Credit Union, Sukis Bakery, who have come on board with us to, to make this a, a reality, and um, DBS, of course, and uh, all the teams and players and all the supporters, you know, really come out every day um, and support the teams, support the teams. Uh, we are very grateful for that. And um, we are going to um, see how we can run a knockout, so hopefully um, the knockout finals will see a bigger, a bigger and better game. But let me just thank everybody, you know, the whole community, um, all our sponsors, everybody who have worked with us during the season, especially our sponsors, Lime. And let's hope um, the knockout can be as, as huge and as, as successful as the, the league champions. Congratulations, Tom. Thank you. Don Leogal, of course, the president of the Harlem Sports Club.
I have the prolific striker, Kilson Benjamin, the scorer of both goals. Kilson Benjamin, you made the switch to the veterans team. You scored two goals in the final to win it. Tell me what's going through your mind. Well, all I have to say, first of all, the switch was because of my coach, my past coach, Kurt Hector. He played for the team last year, so I decided I was going to dedicate this season to him and come and play for his team. And scoring both goals in the finals, especially it was 1-1 one -one and scored the final goal to win the game. That was all I was going through my mind is coach. Tears alone that didn't come out in my eyes, but that victory is basically for my coach. It must have been very nerve-wracking going down to the final moments there at 1-1. Very much so. But we just kept our head. We know at other moments in the game the, the goal would come because they are playing high up and we were really getting balls behind the defence and first half we threw a number of goals and then I thought at the moment I'd win the finals by throwing them a lot of goals in the first half but then I got the winning goal and that took all the pressure off for me. And <laughs> continue to play hard and we won the game. You redeemed yourself. Tell me a little bit about the opponents, the, the former champions, the guys whom you the front. Well, as you know, they, they play the, the three at the back, but they, they compact the middle with five midfielders. And that was a tough for us, a kind of a way. But we opened up the game and keep their defenders running. And at the end, you could see their legs were getting tired. They were really just all over the place. But then at the end, they really fought at, they really fought at the end, but then they couldn't get the goal because I think our defense really played well throughout the whole season. Wilson Benjamin, congratulations. Well, that's it on our first episode of Sports Art Entertainment, brought to you by Quicklink Productions and Dominican News Online. Special thanks to Champagne Reef Dive and Snorkel. Be sure to check in with DNO for latest updates from Quicklink Productions and, of course, more episodes of Sports Art Entertainment. My name is Miguel Labadee. You can just call me Dr. Miggs. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.